two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Check one, two, one, two. Eli Seals. God changed my life. The fact is, a lot of people are intimidated by bikers, especially when we show up as a group all wearing our leather vests and patches. Maybe it's the way we've been portrayed in the movies. Maybe it's events like the Stones concert at Altamont where people died. Whatever it is, lots of people are still uneasy when we show up. But let me tell you something. There are millions of us on the road today, and we're good people. The group I'm riding with, we're on a mission to make an impact in the world. Now, we're on a journey to the buffalo chip in the Black Hills of Sturgis, South Dakota. We've all come together in search of God, in search of country, in search of truth. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. To thou our kingdom and the power in the Holy Spirit, this is to glorify God. It's going to, to continue in the future years to, to be a, a Holy Spirit-led event. So uh, none of us as individuals want to take credit for it. Uh, we don't take credit for it. Uh, everything good about this is through the leading of the Holy Spirit. We're fighting for our faith right now. Amen. We're fighting for our faith right That's now. Right. Yep. And we're as, we're as serious about this as, as anything we ever did in combat. I had members of my own family many times when I started riding the bike ask me, why are you doing that? You know, and I labored it how to answer that question and it finally came to me uh, one day that the reason I ride a bike is that I believe we're all endowed by our Creator with the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. 
and I never feel more alive than when I'm in the saddle on my motorcycle. I, I'm never happier than when I'm riding in God's creation, and I feel very, very liberated and free when I'm riding. Bikers are very strong-willed, stubborn, freedom-loving individuals, and when they yield their will to Christ, they're the strongest advocates of a Christian walk and witnessing for Christ of any group that I've ever been associated with. I just love being around them. club name but it was out in California I ran with a club out there and um, you could just let your mind run wild who it was and uh, I can't tell you everything but um, I got in because I had something that they wanted and I had it they seen I was a man of my word and uh, it was some uh, very high stuff they needed oh I don't even like to say it, but I was their enforcer. If you owed us money, I went and collected. It was, it was me, you know, it was my life. I come home from the service and all I wanted to do was fight. They trained me to fight, they trained me to kill people. I came home and I had that on my mind and I'd go out and fight, never lost. I changed my life 12 years ago. I lived for the Lord Jesus Christ. I share God's word with whoever I can, when I can, one percenters, whoever, and I'm not ashamed of him. He's brought me out of the bondage of hell. I rode motorcycles since I was a little child. I was really introduced to the motorcycle gang lifestyle, was at the racetracks, and I was in charge of transporting illegal immigrants from uh, Mexico into the United States. They had classified me as armed and dangerous. And the federal authorities, when you have that classification on you, they put you on a whole different level. It's, uh, it's no playing. So when they started shooting, to shoot at the tires, when I had put the eight people in, there were two children I would say about four to four and a half foot tall that I had set at the back doors of the van. And they ended up shooting 47 bullet holes through my van and shot and killed the two children. And for 18 months I laid there and was just waiting for a death sentence to be imposed on me of 165 years. And my day in court come 18 months later and I stood up in front of the judge, and the judge said, Mr. Rivers, he said, you're charged with the deaths of these two children. And I said, yes, sir, I know I am. And he said, well, through all so much investigations that we have done and everything, he said, um, 
uh, Mr. Rivers, he said, I am dismissing these two charges of second degree murder because you're not responsible for taking the lives of these two children. They showed photos of my back with the back patch, but they never had a photo of me looking sideways with the back patch in my face. Uh, through a chain of events, this motorcycle ministry came in called CMA with this man named Don Johnson. And, and when I said that prayer of forgiveness and accepted Christ in my life, in my heart, I said the prayer with my heart, it just used my lips to repeat some words. I meant it. And now, Billy is no longer the important one. It's the poor lost people out here that don't know Christ. It's the hungry. I was in prison. He came visited me. I was naked. He clothed me. I was lost and he found me. That's the type of God I serve. A God of forgiveness. I mean, uh, they're, they're just, they're, they've got wonderful hearts. They've all lived a different life. They've all walked a different walk. They all, but we all talk the same talk. We all proclaim Christ, you know? I mean, we, each one of us has a unique story to tell. And we've been through different walks of life. And I think that's what makes these brothers and sisters so beautiful is that it doesn't matter who you're talking to or where you're going to or where you're riding. They love everybody. So they're family. Basically, I mean, um, in and out of churches, in and out of prison, um, you know, my journey, my life journeys have just been all over the place. Drug addiction, alcoholism, you name it, I've been there. All right, when um, I met Sally, and she doesn't like to hear this, but uh, I wanted nothing to do with her. Uh, she was a mess, broken mess. Um, saying words I'd never said and smoking things I'd never smoked and drinking things I'd never drank. So I was, I knew she was not the woman for me. <laughs> just pretty well sure of that. And I just pretty much told her I wanted nothing to do with her. But God changed my heart and changed Sally's life. And since then, we've, we've been together and making music and loving each other. Roland's somewhat of a mule head. <laughs> You know, I mean, it, but he is telling the truth. He's, I think we kind of compliment ourselves, even though at first we were water and, and oil. Uh, when you shake things up, it mixes. able to take our ministry to places that he's never been which God showed me and then I showed him that that you can't just judge people by by the way they act I, I can remember rolling into a very small town with a group and there was one small restaurant in that town it was an open sign on the door until we rolled up they closed it and literally closed the blinds we were in leathers and it was a cold day. We all had chaps and leather coats. And, you know, I mean, we probably looked pretty rough. And I thought, man, they, they have judged us before they've met us. 
And I can be guilty of that as well. I can look at a person and be very judgmental. So my, my thought would be get to know us first. Yeah. Give us a chance. I think oftentimes just, we're misunderstood. Just because we're in leather, just because we're on a motorcycle, it doesn't make us bad. There's all these folks trying to categorize people because they have a motorcycle or because they might be looked at as a biker or something like that. And it's been my experience that you know, all those are just basically wrong. What you got here is the nicest people in the world anyway. If they're on a motorcycle, it's like that old Honda commercial. You know, you meet the nicest people on a motorcycle is what it amounts to. If Jesus was wandering the world, walking the world today, he'd be right here. He'd be right in the trenches with us. You killed the mighty portrait, 10,000 burdens high. All I can tell you is my life is not one that I'm proud of. Sex, drugs, rock and roll, <laughs> Judas Priest, ACDC, this was the life that I led. And uh, at that time, them roaring my name, it was all about Christine Black. And it made me feel good. It pulled me out of that hurt and that pain. And to come to the point where I am right now, I would go through every thing that I ever endured just to be where I'm at right now. I would do it all over again. Lift your eyes to the mountain, let your taste be dead and gone. When I ride my trike, it, I'm out in the open of everything that God has created. I'm surrounded by every living thing. I just praise Him even when I ride a bike. I just start praying and it's a time to feel the wind and the, and the breeze and it's almost like God breathing on me. You know, you can just feel God all around and you just look around and you see all the beauty and everything God's created and the bike just because you got that openness of nothing that's surrounding you except for God. And it's just totally awesome. Come on, put your hands together. I pray that the hurt, lost, and broken that don't know Jesus Christ, that the light will shine so brightly in this place that they can't deny Jesus that the unconditional love will just, and that the, just flow through this place and touch the lives and the hearts and the souls of people. Because it's not about religion, it's about a relationship. The way this event came about is about 12 years ago, it was around 2005, I was riding in the Black Hills. I was just in prayer, enjoying the ride, and said to myself, you know, I'm gonna really enjoy this ride out because I think this may be the last time I'll ever see the Black Hills. And I just felt this voice say, this calling say, no, I, you're coming back. I've got a plan for you. There's a, there's a certain magic I decided about this property. It attracts people. People come here um, for whatever reason. And uh, one day QD walked into my office and said he had his mission, his ministry. Um, and, and he felt like he had a mission to try to get more Christian organizations together in one place where they could share their ministries, where they could share spirituality, have a nice event over a weekend or something. And uh, he just thought that this was the right place to do that. I'm most excited to see how the Christian bikers that are coming to this event react. We have, from the beginning, felt like Christian bikers from different organizations around the country would benefit all of them in terms of strengthening their own independent ministries or their individual walks. It's just one hard work in Jose, I tell you what, he really does have a, a mission and uh, he hasn't dropped the ball ever. I mean, he's had plenty of opportunity to, you know, over the last two years already that we've been planning this that I've been involved in. And when I've gone to different organizations, Christian backer organizations, and told them 
about the rally. They get real excited. They, I think this is a great idea to get together with their fellows and the riders and the Christian Biker Brotherhood. And I tell them, and we're going to headquarter at the Buffalo Chip. Uh, the jaw drops, and they, you know, they say they repeat the, the Buffalo Chip <laughs> because of the reputation that the Biker Week has. Several million people have been in and out of this place and have seen what goes on at our stage, uh, been here, enjoyed our hospitality, and uh, you know they, they come back and hopefully they bring new friends with them and uh, bring their kids with them next time, right? Uh, we've consecrated this ground to Christ and it's the people who are coming together that are gonna make it the environment that we need to sing, pledge, and pray. I think it's, it's time to claim it for Christ. It's had a, a nasty reputation, if you wanna use that word, for a long time. And it's time to change that whole attitude and change the environment that we are and let the spirit move, let the spirit be felt. But this is the Lord's rally. We, let, we turned it over to the Holy Spirit to say, hey, you know, we'll set up the venue at His direction. He'll call the people to be here. All we have to do is reach out to them and make them aware of the event and depend on the Holy Spirit to work on the hearts of those that He wants to come to the Black Hills for the Light of the Hills rally. After three years of planning, we recognize that this is not the end of our journey. This is the beginning. This is the first annual Light Up the Hills rally, but we'll be bringing the Christian Biker Brotherhood together here in the Black Hills, headquartered at the Buffalo Chip, for years to come. excitement that you experience and you want to go back to that level of adrenaline excitement and that appeals to the human that appeals to the human and that's where even the danger all right jumping out of airplane that's a good experience man of your paratroopers you know what they like to do on their day off is get up 10,000 feet in air and jump out of a perfectly good airplane are they crazy? Well, uh, yeah, they are. But I can run 168 to 170 miles an hour in a quarter mile on a motorcycle, and I'm saying they're crazy, and here I am on one back wheel of an alcohol burning Harley, and they saying, this dude's nuts. Well, maybe so, maybe so. Consecutive year that we've had our veterans tribute. Um, we started off during the um, rally and naturally didn't make any big deal out of it. But um, we've always had a very, very high percentage of veterans here at the chip, and uh, it didn't seem like the right thing to do. And uh, so then, 2003, when uh, we started another war, um, we uh, put up a thousand flags up here, uh, just as purely a symbol of uh, patriotism and the second year we did the same thing we put up a thousand and I gotta tell you that was a lot of work someone was offended because I sang the national anthem in a in a restaurant bar type setting and uh, that was a sobering moment uh, an angry moment and all at the same time is a, a proud moment because in my opinion uh, if you're an American there's no place on earth that that song is inappropriate so we started reminding people from that point on at the end of our shows don't be afraid to sing the national anthem don't be afraid to uh, pledge allegiance to our flag and uh, don't be afraid to pray and sadly we're living in a day and time where, where people are actually scared to do that and that's 
I never thought I would live to see today. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light? I pledge allegiance to the flag with all my heart and with all my mind. I'm Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. I will sing, I will pledge, and I will pray. Proud, proud to be an American. Makes me feel really proud to be American. Yeah, we wrote this song here at a, at a place called uh, The Landing in Louisiana. It's just about this place that we were at. You know, it's one of those little clubs, that, uh, neighborhood clubs, and, and also a lot of people come from all over there. And uh, the owner's name is Mary. It's called The Landing. Somebody, someone yelled out um, Mary's Landing for the title. And uh, so we kind of went with it from there. 20,000 corners, stare above the facial order. Don't mind these if she don't mind. Robin Darrow and ESP, we play the songs to suit. First of all, this is my first time ever in South Dakota, much less Sturgis. I never thought I'd, I'd be playing a main stage here. Um, but the way I got it was uh, just. I wrote a song that I thought people needed to hear, and, uh, and the right people heard it, and uh, had believed, had, uh, they believed in it, and uh, they wanted to help spread the message, and that's, that's, uh, that's where Sing, Pledge, Pray was born, and hopefully we can carry on that throughout my lifetime and generations to come. It's been so long, I just can't stay. I can't wait to fall Mary's land. A little small town called Thomas, Louisiana, about 50 miles north of New Orleans. Uh, trust me, you've never been there. Or if you have, you wouldn't know it. So it's that small. Uh, love life, love my family, love God, love America. It's all about the song, man. Just a good lyric, a good melody, and uh, just tell the story. It's all you got to do. Just don't overdo it. What brings me here today is Light Up the Hills Rally. There's been a lot of work put in to gather all the Christian bikers together, the different ministries, and to really show a big point here that doing God's work, it does not have to be about what patch we wear on our back. It's about all of us coming into union as one, doing the work of Jesus Christ. God gave this man, Q, a vision about bringing the Christian motorcyclists across the world, the United States together. And it wasn't just to ride motorcycles. It wasn't just to hang out and talk. It was to reinforce each other that this lost and dying world out here, we are the ones that's called, has the calling on our life to shine the light of Jesus Christ across this land. One thing led to the other and these are doors that God opens. When people ask me, who's your manager? Who does everything for you? I don't have a manager. I don't have a producer. I don't have an agent. I have Jesus Christ. He's all of the above and more. That is my hope for this whole weekend is for just however many the Lord can, will bring here that I can share my life story with them 
and just show them that you know what, this Jesus, he's real. I may never get an opportunity to do anything like this again and I'm just uh, uh, overwhelmed with excitement and, uh, and very honored, very honored to be a part of this. Play hard and go home. together earlier today up at Crossroads and, uh, and we did the same thing, just a different song. And uh, we gonna, as promised, we're gonna pull it off tonight. However, I mean, the song is only like six hours here, uh, six hours old, and uh, it's our second time to play it, so y'all bear with us. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Crossroads. South Dakota, you know, I came all the way from New Orleans for this, so you guys better be good today because we're going to write a great song. Anybody can come forward, you know, chime in some lyrics and stuff. Yeah, we start off with a title, we'll go from there. Anybody got a cool title? I do. I just came up with it. I can't believe it. You won't be buffaloed by Jesus. Now you at the crossroads. I miss you at the crossroads. From hard times to good times. Miracle. Yeah. Why did they have to eat the apple? Lost on the road. Ended up at crossroads here at the chip. Just write that down. It kind of. Okay. We're seven minutes in. All right, y'all. We got we got some good work in progress here. So. Let's know something in there about bikers. The open road. People, let's come up with with just a few more uh, title options. Another storyline. Drive off at the crossroads. When you're that. down, a father's love will take away the frown. It's a long, hard road. Uh, the road will tell the story. How about praying in the wind. The face of a bike. Um, what did you I, I, I can get the eye when looking at you. The wrinkles on the face of a biker tells many, many stories. Come on, you're a man with many words. So now Eli and the band are trying to work out a melody. They get the groove going, then we'll write some additional lyrics. That's a real biker. It's encouraging, it's collaboration. I rode so hard when I smiled, I had bugs in my teeth. I just say I'm at peace with the world. Well, we brush them once in a I while, but you know. Peace. peace with myself. <laughs> peace with God. I rode hard and I was put up wet many times. <laughs> <laughs> or dried off in the jail cell. <laughs> this is just great. Just seeing the ideas everybody's coming up with. Eli Seals, I love this guy. wonderful experience. My job is over in 21 minutes and 29 seconds. <laughs> My whole family's here helping. Eli, come on, man. Let's get there. Right. Eli's going to go in the back and work a little magic with the boys. Yeah, you're getting it with that. Meet me at the crossroads. We're going to line up those here. Want to do anything about switching gears? Oh, it was awesome. So we wrote a song using the audience members that were here and we basically themed it to the rally light up the hills so eli was leading it out and we were asking the different people in the audience for lyrics and verses and the title of the song and basically the audience wrote the whole thing and eli tweaked it and put music behind it it was fun yeah i love it <laughs> we don't have more time huh? give us two hours? the title is meet me at the crossroads and it's just about this biker who's struggling and has a heavy load and doesn't know Jesus yet. And so he comes to the cross, he's on his way to the crossroads because he knows he needs to meet Jesus. And uh, once he does, we'll be able to light up the hills with, uh, with his faith. 
I want this song to be the instigator that promotes the rally, Light Up the Hills rally, and that it brings people in, and that, that bikers will hear it and say, man, that's me, I need to come to that. Where is that, what time, I'll clear my schedule, I gotta be there. All right, here comes Eli. Let's meet at the crossroads, y'all. Good, light them up. Here we go. conversation where he asked me if I was mad at God and if, if I felt like God had done this to me I realized that God didn't do it to me but God can give me the power to turn it into something else so I turned that pity party into a mission statement that's right Shiloh how are we going to get through this I pray through Mary to God mm-hmm Mary, the mother of Jesus, give me a break, right. man. But that's a problem for some of these people. The yeah. rosary, that's a deal breaker. The statues in the church, that's a deal breaker. Right. I was told that we, I'm not even a Christian. I used to use brothers in Christ. That doesn't even work. I was literally told I had to leave my faith to work with these folks. What do you say to that? What I say to that is that they are missing the bullseye. They because I'm wrong. telling you, they, they missed are, the bullseye by a long way to they me. They are 100% wrong, Steve. I was like, wrong, wait a minute, Steve. we're brothers in Listen, Christ, man. I can't, I, I don't understand I don't this. care if you're a Baptist, if you're a Catholic, a Presbyterian, a Pentecostal. I don't care if you're a Muslim, a Mormon. If you honestly believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, actually God in the flesh, gave his life for our sins, and you accept Christ into your heart, guess what? You're gonna spend eternity in, in heaven. When, when, when I was in prison, 
okay? There was a whole uh, sect of Muslims in there that in our Christian church services, they was in charge of running the PA system. They would come in and run the PA system for a pastor right. to preach to us. So who am I to say I don't like Muslims when they stepped out and said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to let you practice your belief and I'm going to help you because you believe that. That's awesome. So I don't look down on Muslims. I don't look, I don't down, look down on Catholics. I don't, I don't look down on anybody because it's mm -hmm. not our position. That's right. As long as you have accepted Christ in your life as the Savior of all mankind, we're all going to be in heaven together. That's awesome. I'll see you in heaven. Hopefully not yeah. in the next no, couple No, we're going to ride motorcycles we need, before we need that. To, yeah, we got to spend some more time down here. We're going to okay. ride motorcycles before okay. heaven. We just wanted you to know that we are officially engaged. Love you, Mama. Okay, love you. we love you too. We'll send you pictures and get online and look at the video. Okay. Okay, love ya. I meet people that uh, you, they, they may not even tell me a lot of times that they've lost all hope, but sometimes you can just see it. I just, my main thing is I lead by example. And I'm one of those kind of people that I invite people into my world. If you want to come into my world and be a part of this, this is great. I can only do so much for you. These people right here are a living testament. They helped us find some adventure this weekend, and we are so grateful. Thank you for being part of our boundless spirit. What this makes me feel is I see God's creation right there. You can see it all in these hills. It's everywhere, so uh, you know you can't get much more beautiful than what you have right here. But the whole time we was driving, you know, I'm looking around and I'm just looking at this beautiful countryside, and, and I'm. I was, I was just saying, thank you so much, Lord. Hey, would you, uh, would you let them bless my bike? First of all, Lord, to lift up our brother, our friend, and to bless him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Father, this is not about a machine. This is about the person that's on the machine. Father, we bless him and his motorcycle, front to back. Lord, we cover him in the blood of Jesus. Father, we just say right now that you would go before and make the crooked places straight. Father, you give him wisdom as he travels and he will hear things that nobody else will hear. He'll see things that nobody else will see and everything will be done in a very timely manner. And the glory of the Lord shall be his rear guard. Father, this is all about you. It's not about him. It's not about this fight. It's about the angels being around yes, us. Right. Not only him, but each and every one of us, everywhere we go. When I signed on that dotted line, joined the military, I said I would give my life for my nation. Right. You know, ironically, you know, most soldiers and family members prepare for death. You rarely prepare for something like this. Coming back home and, and not knowing what my life was going to hold after injury, because I literally spent three years in recovery, teaching myself how to walk again, talk again, eat, brush my own teeth. You know, things that I used to take for granted. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I know I got like a really great hairdo nowadays, it's really easy to take care of, but you know, the, <laughs> there's still struggles that come with the, the things that I have to deal with each day. When I'm able to come and visit National Monuments, it's a true uh, welcome home for me. The Light of the Hills rally has done a lot for many men and women. It not only united riders, it united veterans, it united spouses, and it rekindled many of us towards our faith in one another and our faith towards America. We've got George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. They re represent the spiritual aspect of what founded this country. Those gentlemen, along with their colleagues, they got on their knees and prayed, and I was asking and seeking the face of God for the Constitution that we have today. If by any chance, there is no God, guess what? We have lost nothing when we take our last breath. If there is a God, 
and we haven't accepted the way to get to him, which is his son, Jesus Christ, we have lost everything. One thing that will not happen, and that's humanity will not ever, everyone come together. That will not happen. You don't think so? No, no, I do, don't. Do you think that in any of Christ's teachings there was any word of that? It all goes back to we was born with a free will to believe in whatever even you have your atheists, you have your agnostics, you have your Christians, you have people with different beliefs in, uh, okay, I don't believe there is a God, I don't believe that there is a Christ, I don't believe that there is salvation. Just imagine that it is possible. Imagine then, that it take is your possible. your spirit and what you're doing, imagine that there is no limitation. I can't describe on how much pleasure the earth would experience, um, how much unity, camaraderie. Um, it's beyond my thoughts of everyone being on one accord. I want you to put that in your mind. That everyone is come together like this? Yes. It's imp I, I feel it's impossible that Look at your life, gang member, getting ready to face the electric chair, and look what you've accomplished. Yes. 99% of the people in the world would say, that's impossible, that, that, that can never happen. But look what happened, it did. It did. So ima imagine the greatest possible truth that there could be. And, and, and with your history and your life, how could you look at me and say, that's not possible? And there's a word that will prove that we love Christ and it's called faith. America, and we'll see you at the rally. Amen.
That was an applause, right? That's a biker's amen. Good deal. Rolling, Ben. You ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four. Look around and there's platinum records from Kansas, Cinderella, Stevie Wonder, Willie Nelson. Uh, some of the best of the best have recorded right here in this little studio in the woods. I really love the song and I think it's crazy that it was just written by a bunch of bikers, so I think it's awesome. <laughs>